in the fast lane. Life in the fast lane on the international motor racing circuit sounds like a dream job, doesn't it? But the reality can be far from glamorous, especially when you have a young family. Chris Blevins was a gearbox mechanic working at race circuits all over the world. Well, I used to enjoy the job. For a lot of people, it's a dream job to work on race cars and quite glamorous and stuff, but it, you know, the reality of it is aeroplanes, hotels, circuits. It's exciting, and, but the but downside is you do work hard and you've got a lot, there's a lot of long hours, there's a lot of time away. Chris's wife, Hannah, also had a great job. I used to run the veterinary lab, doing all the blood tests and the microbiology. And fantastic job. I loved it. It was the best job ever. But there was something missing. With Chris being away all the time in the States, it just wasn't... It, it wasn't right, it didn't feel right, and the children never saw their dad, and that's not what we had children for. We used to be out the house by 7 o'clock in the morning, and usually I'd be home 8, 9 o'clock at night, but well, they're in bed at 7, so if on a normal week I wouldn't see them from Sunday night really till Saturday morning if, if it was that busy, so and that's no way to go on when you live in the same house. Hannah had always had a dream. If you'd asked me as a child, I wanted to be a farmer's wife, and I've always loved being around farms, and we used to live in Gosberton, not far from here, and... Uh, they had farmland around us and I used to help them out picking potatoes and that sort of thing. And I loved it. So two years ago, Hannah and Chris moved to Lincolnshire. Land is relatively cheap here and they were able to buy just over 13 acres, from which they produce hay and vegetables, as well as raising pigs and sheep. But it's been far from easy. I knew it was going to be hard, but I didn't realise how long and hard it was going to be to get it established. I had no idea about the paperwork involved in doing this, and with farming especially, to do anything, you've got to fill forms in. Things haven't gone as quickly as we wanted, or plant permission issues, or whatever issue there was, I think it's delayed us back 12 months. But Hannah has realised her dream. She's a farmer's wife. And she's recruited her mum, Liz, to the cause, a true family business. Liz is in charge of making the jams, yeah. chutneys and cordials, which are one of the main income streams for the farm. I should have retired by now. I find that it's more than the three days that I was expecting to work. I've put in extra hours here, there and everywhere. But uh, I, th I think seeing their satisfaction is, is, is worth it, to me anyway. When you put a meal in front of your children where you've produced absolutely everything on the plate, to me that is just the best thing ever. I see them giving their children the sort of um, freedom that we had as, as I, when I was a child and that I was able to give my two children. And uh, it's very satisfying to see them running free in the, in the fields and learning to deal with animals. Do you want to know how we built this, Dan? They love it. They don't think they'll be anywhere else. They'll just disappear. He'll come up here and they'll run off the top paddock and just play and then come back when they're hungry. Now you live on a farm, do you get to see more of your dad? Yeah. Yeah. Is that great? Yeah. yeah. Because we didn't used to see him because he used to go away for like two weeks. We take it in turns to come and help Daddy do the animals. OK. No, 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 no. Can we have some table manners, please, round here? I'm not putting up with this, honestly. So, two years into the project, where are they financially? Well, before we obviously had a regular, decent income, and now we have a very regular, paltry <laughs> income, and we've got a bigger mortgage than we had before, so we're financially much worse off than we were, but we have different rewards in life than monetary rewards. More important things than money. There's one problem they weren't expecting. We bought a three-quarters collie quarter, quarter boxer boxing. with the intention of training up as a sheepdog, but unfortunately he's got no interest whatsoever in sheep. So, until the dog gets its act together, we're rounding up the sheep. Send them round the fence time. again. It's not working. <laughs> Turn right. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, these are shit. fairly acrobatic, these sheep. Shit. Watch out, Joel, stand still. There you go, look, simple as what that. What technique? What, what are you worried about? We need a dog, don't we? Definitely want a dog. Your, your next sheep dog uh, better be up to the task. <laughs> A very cheery hello from a nippy Lincolnshire. I'm in Frisney down on Chris and Hannah's farm. And by the way, we did give the dog a hand and we got the sheep in the pen behind me. Now then, Chris, in this freezing weather, don't you hanker and long for that nice, glamorous, jet-setting, motor-racing job you used to have? Well, international racing circuits, hospitality laid on, nice warm hotel room, double bed on my own. Who would give it up, eh? Tempted to go back? <laughs> Oh, I think I'll stick with farming for a little bit first. There was a bit of a look from Hannah there. <laughs> now then, the credit crunch is affecting us all. You're selling farm produce. How's it going? Well, we're at the luxury end of the market with our homemade produce, and the Christmas markets haven't been as good as we'd hoped for or expected, so we've broadened our horizons and now we're selling online. 
Hannah, did you underestimate the challenge of being a novice, small-time farmer? With any project like this, what we did underestimate was the fact that everything takes twice as long and costs twice as much. And we could do it 36 hours in every day, but hey. <laughs> You're going to make it work? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. The trouble with living the dream is that you occasionally wake up to a reality check, rather like the rest of us, in fact. Carol, thanks very much. I was particularly pleased there to see, if you look carefully, you can see uh, they're wearing West Brom hats there. Can we have a look? Let's have a look. Give us a wave, boys. Fantastic. How did you That's spot